Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Trump just fired the entire board of Democrats' number one agency. He's had enough. A consultant who worked with the highly politicized Consumer Financial Protection Bureau (CFPB) claims the organization funneled a large portion of more than $5 billion in collected penalties back into community organizers aligned with Democrats as part of a giant slush fund according to the New York Post. The Post reports, the CFPB funneled a large portion of the more than $5 billion in penalties collected from defendants to community organizers aligned with Democrats, a slush fund by another name, said a consultant who worked with CFPB on its civil penalty fund and requested anonymity. Many believe the rogue agency created under the former Obama regime should have simply been disbanded by President Donald Trump last year. However, President Trump did what some consider as the next best thing in putting Mick Mulvaney in charge of it. It seems Mulvaney is doing his best to revamp and redirect the agency after he just fired an entire 25-member team that advised the board dash. The Washington Post reports, Mick Mulvaney, acting director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, fired the agency's 25-member advisory board Wednesday, days after some of its members criticized his leadership of the watchdog agency. The CFPB said it will revamp the Consumer Advisory Board, known as the CAB, in the fall with all new members. The panel has traditionally played an influential role in advising the CFPB's leadership on new regulations and policies. But some members, who include prominent consumer advocates, academics, and industry executives, began to complain that Mulvaney was ignoring them and making unwise decisions about the agency's future. On Monday, 11 CAB members held a news conference and criticized Mulvaney for, among other things, canceling legally required meetings with the group. On Wednesday, group members were notified that they were being replaced and that they could not reapply for spots on the new board. In a statement, the agency's spokesman, John Zwartaki, took a final swipe at the group. The outspoken members of the Consumer Advisory Board seem more concerned about protecting their taxpayer-funded junkets to Washington, D.C., and being wined and dined by the Bureau than protecting consumers, he said. Revamping the board is part of the CFPB's new approach to reaching out to stakeholders to increase high-quality feedback, the Bureau said in an email to the group. The CFPB will hold more town halls and roundtable discussions, the letter said, and the new CAB will have fewer members, naturally. The leftist progressive Democrats threw the expected hissy fit and took to the mainstream media to spew the expected talking points. Dash Mick Mulvaney has no intention of putting consumers above financial firms that cheat them. This is what happens when you put someone in charge of an agency they think shouldn't exist, Senator Elizabeth Warren, D. Mass, who helped conceive of the Bureau, said in a statement. Senator Sherrod Brown, Democrat Ohio, said, Mulvaney has proven once again he would rather cozy up with payday lenders and industry insiders than listen to consumer advocates who want to make sure hardworking Americans are not cheated by financial scams. Both President Trump and Mick Mulvaney have had strong opinions about the CFPB in the past and many believe the purging of the cab was a step in the right direction. The right direction being the ultimate elimination of the agency. Mulvaney is quoted with regards to the CFPB as stating, it is a completely unaccountable agency, and I think that's wrong and adding if the law allowed this place not to exist, I'd sit down with the president to try to make the case that other agencies can do this job well if not more effectively." Mulvaney also called the agency a sad, sick joke. In addition to the $5 billion slush fund detailed in the Post, the CFPB has also engaged in the following highly questionable activities dash, Black Square, bounced business owners and industry reps from secret meetings it's held with Democrat operatives, radical civil rights activists, trial lawyers and other community advisors, according to a report by the House Financial Services Committee, Black Square, retained GMMB, the liberal advocacy group that created ads for the Obama and Hillary Clinton presidential campaigns, for more than $40 million, making the Democrat shop the sole recipient of CFPB's advertising expenditure, Rubin says, Black Square, met behind closed doors to craft financial regulatory policy with notorious bank shakedown groups who have taken hundreds of thousands of dollars in federal grant money to gin up housing and lending discrimination complaints, which in turn are fed back to CFPB, according to Investors Business Daily and Judicial Watch. Aside from all of this, the CFPB is also known to have assembled several massive consumer databases which raise privacy and corporate liability concerns. According to The Hill, one sweeps up personal credit card information and another compiles data on as many as 230 million mortgage applicants focusing on race and ethnicity.
yet another database contains more than 900,000 unvetted grievances against various financial companies, according to Alan Kaplinsky, lead regulatory attorney for Ballard Sparrow LP. Think of a database with the depth and breadth of Google, yet used solely by the government. Mulvaney is already answering questions about at least one of the databases. Recently questioned at a two-hour forum with State Attorney General Derek Schmidt about elder abuse in Topeka, Kansas, Mulvaney was asked whether he believed it was still useful to keep an online database of complaints against lenders and other financial companies. Mulvaney responded stating he had not yet made a decision about how publicly accessible the database will remain, though the CFPB did formally publish a notice in April seeking public comments on its complaint process and the public database. He stated, the real question is, how does it help consumers to make it public? He said during a news conference after an event in Topeka. Again, what we're talking about is something where you have a difficult time. Are we helping you fix your problem? Do we have to make it public to do that? In a news conference after the forum, Mulvaney elaborated, it's essentially a taxpayer-funded Yelp for financial institutions, and you ask yourself if that's a good use of our time and our money. We're in the middle of that analysis. Questions have already arisen about just what happens if and when a Democratic administration takes charge of the White House again. Can the CFPB again be weaponized against conservatives and independents much as the IRS has been? As Steve Hayes explained last year, the board is a rogue independent agency that has a broad mandate to end unfair, deceptive, and abusive practices, all in the name of protecting the consumer. It is a vague mandate that could mean anything to anyone. The board is not accountable to anyone least of all Congress which means it has no oversight and they can literally do as they please. Clearly, they already are. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click, like, and subscribe. Thank you.